Well, my favorite teaching segment of everything is the diamond system study. Uh, I've uh, taught the diamond system for 40 years. Uh, it used to be very complicated. Now, just so everyone understands what the diamond system refers to, it's not actually a simple system, one system. The diamond system study is a combination of over 40 different mathematical systems for banking and kicking. So what I'm going to do in order to set this straight as far as the foundation for this study, uh, I'm going to include uh, the terminology of the table. So the diamond system terminology is a combination of several elements in the game. Uh, one other element we need to be aware of is that if you combine the purity of your mechanics, which we've taught to this point, with the purity of the math, which is basically the diamond system converted into a mathematical formula, then you'll get a pure result. So if you remember that, then it's worth the time to spend on this diamond system study. We're going to start out here on the table with uh, several different uh, terms that will uh, help you have your foundation for this. Uh, if you look, first of all, all pool tables have diamonds on them. Now, if I've got some chalk here on the rail. Uh, there's a diamond here, as you can see. Now, some of these are in the shape of diamonds, and years ago, they were actually a, uh, a mother of pearl. They were ivory. Uh, uh, they also are in the, sometimes they're round, and they call them sites on the table. But uh, I want to kind of give you a reference point for the length of the table in terms of the generic number of diamonds. Now, there is a diamond also in the corner we'll get to in just a second, but there's one in the corner. There's a second diamond here. There's a third diamond, a fourth diamond. There's a fifth one here at the pocket at the side. Now, the one at the side is in line with the other diamonds right in the center of the pocket. Okay, and we keep going six, seven, eight, nine. And when you get up to this end of the table or at any corner of the table technically, the diamond is actually where the two cushions meet. Now, this is something that you won't see uh, explained very often, but the diamond is actually where the two cushions meet, just like that. So if you take the distance between the diamonds, and I'll now go back down to this and illustrate that, from one diamond to another, there's actually what's called a segment. So we have the diamonds individually, and then we have the diamond segments, which is the distance between two diamonds. So from this diamond to this diamond, you have a segment. Now if I also reference that with chalk, we can show it this way. If we take a piece of chalk and put it here, and a piece of chalk and put it here, the distance between the two diamonds is a segment. If I put this diamond halfway between these two diamonds, then the reference point here between these two half, that total distance is a segment. So as you go along this long rail, you'll have this segment here. You'll have another segment here. So let's count the segments. So from this diamond to this diamond is one segment, two segments, three segments, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the length of the table, we have nine diamonds, and we have eight diamond segments. Now, if you go the width of the table, we have, and we'll count the diamonds kind of leaning over this way, we have one diamond in the corner, we have a second diamond here, a third diamond, a fourth diamond, and a fifth diamond. And if you count the number of segments from this diamond in this corner over to here is one diamond segment, two, three, four. So the diamond system is basically based upon the rectangular uh, formula of length twice the width. So we have eight segments of length, and we have four segments of width. We have nine diamonds of length. We have five diamonds of width. But the basic diamond system is based upon that two-to-one relationship of the segments and not necessarily the diamonds. And we'll be referencing both diamonds and segments in our presentation for several segments. Now, a couple of other things we need to know about these diamonds. When you're uh, calculating certain types of um, angles and things like that, we have to connect one diamond with another. So if we take, let's just say, for instance, the diamond on this cushion or this rail, and we take the diamond on that rail and we draw a line between them. This is what's called a track line. So in other words, you have a track line between any two connecting diamonds. So we could go from that diamond to there. We could go from that diamond to there. We go from that diamond to there. So you have uh, basically thousands and thousands of diamond track lines on the table. These track lines are going to be used to calculate specific angles into the cushion. For an example, if I lay this down here, there's actually an angular pattern here where this cue stick meets this cushion. So this angle in here is less than 90 degrees and 99% of all the shots you shoot in pool involve when you're kicking or even when you're banking you're shooting into what's called acute angles or less than 90 degrees and so that's a very important principle to remember is that when we're doing our calculations we're going to be calculating acute angles now if you have another cue stick that's next to that cue stick we're also going to be dealing with what's called parallel lines if you look at this very closely these two lines are parallel to each other so Often we'll calculate a specific track line, which gives you an angle. Then we'll move that line over to, let's say, the cue ball or the object ball in a parallel movement. And then that gives you the same angle that you started with. So the calculation of the angle of this acute angle, when you move it over parallel, is the same acute angle. So this is what we call a parallel shift. And you will get into doing quite a few parallel shifts, either in banking or kicking. So 
These are some principles I want to explain to you for using the diamond system steady. Uh, we're going to be covering several different elements, the one railers, the twos, threes, up to five, also several types of banks. So I want you to learn this. Uh, remember the formula that the pure mechanics plus the pure math equals a pure result. And if you incorporate that into your individual pool game, you're going to become a top flight player no matter where you're playing. So I hope you've enjoyed this CSI instructional tip.